cameraman? Roll it. When we arrived in California, we had the honor of meeting with Larry Brook, the founder of General Hydroponics. He gave us lots of advice for our hydroponic micro farm and he let me interview him. In those many years, those decades that have passed, where I went from being, heavens, 24 years old to now 64 years old, I built a company, first alone and then with friends, and we built technologies to feed the world. And now, our planet has gone from 4 billion to more than 7 billion human beings. In the field of hydroponics, so much of the produce is flavorless. We grow tomatoes that taste like water with poor nutrition. They might be pretty on the store shelf, but they're disappointing in your salad. And that is not a good achievement. But we in General Hydroponics have pioneered top quality produce. Produce with flavor and nutrition. And we've learned through analyses that if something tastes good, it is more nutritious. There's a direct connection. I see a lot of things that I don't like, such as commercial agriculture using aggressive chemicals and monoculture, literally destroying nature. And I see some good things. The organic movement trying to recognize polyculture, growing symbiotic plants together, and enabling uh, us to be go back to a more natural system. My experience has it that when new and revolutionary technologies are invented, it takes some time for people to learn how to use them in an appropriate and wholesome way. It's not the technology, it's the way it's used, which is the issue. And the same goes for farming and agriculture. Larry, what is your opinion on urban farming? Urban farming is critical. Long, long ago, there were no cities. We were hunter-gatherers. And with the beginning of civilization, which is to say populated communities, the advent of farming began. And farming enabled cities, and cities necessitated farming. But when you consider that the average tomato travels 1,500 miles, call it more than 2,000 kilometers, to reach your plate, there's something wrong with that picture because, one, that tomato was harvested when it was green and has poor flavor and nutrition. Two, it took an enormous carbon footprint to move it to your plate. And three, it's not a sustainable method. And if people choose to live in cities, as they do, then they need to farm in cities. And it is necessary and a good thing. And that means hydroponics is the answer. It is not giant farms in the fields of the rural world. What about when people say that uh, it's not natural that the plants don't go on soil and that the plants actually, many people think that the plants actually eat the soil. So what do you have to answer to them? <laughs> well, you know, that's true and not true. So let's look at the true part. Yes, a hydroponic system is not a natural system. A cornfield in Iowa is not a natural system. A field of rice in China or Japan is not a natural system. These plants don't care, they don't know. All they care and know about is, am I getting water, am I getting nutrition? And by the way, am I getting light and fresh air? Because that is needed too. So the hydroponic technology is really just a enhancement to provide a higher level of hydration of water and a more controlled amount of nutrition. So, if the plant has everything it needs, then it will be more nutritive than a plant that would go in soil with some uh, deficiencies? Absolutely. Absolutely. Easy to measure, easy to see. Mm. That is a universal truth. And in fact, most plants growing in soil do have a nutrient deficiency, do have a challenge finding water, 
and therefore they grow big root systems using a lot of their growth energy to grow root systems which they don't have to grow with hydroponics because it's all there. What about the future of a bioponics culture? Bioponic culture will merge with hydroponic culture to become the next wave of agriculture. Those aspects of organic or bioponic that are authentic will inevitably merge. So now we make hydroponic methods, as you know, where we recirculate the water and the nutrients. We do not discard the water or the nutrients. They come back around and around. But we clean it with a biofilter, which is a matrix of life of bacteria and fungi that are beneficial that pick up the plant waste because plants discard their waste in the nutrient solution and unless you throw that solution away you have to clean up that waste and this is the bioponic method but we still get better results with purified mineral nutrients now people go ah you're growing with chemicals well for the record every atom in the universe can be called chemicals so please define it are chemicals the nasty toxic poisons that go into industrial chemistry like solvents or things like that? Yes, they are. Are chemistries and chemicals the iron in our blood, the calcium in our bones, the um, chitosan or the chitin in our hair, or in birds' feathers, or the skin of animals? Yes, these are chemistries and these are chemicals. The definitions are a human thing. The chemicals don't care. The universe is made of chemicals. So, chemistry? Of course, everything is chemistry. What about aquaponic culture? So we met several people with several opinions. Some of them, they think that just with the fishes, you can grow many plants. And some of them say you need a hybrid in between uh, aquaponics and hydroponics because the fishes would not deliver all the nutrients the plant would need. The fish will not deliver all the nutrients the plant will need. That is a correct statement and it is unequivocal. Fish waste will contain a little nitrogen. You will not get the trace elements, the calcium, the phosphate, the potassium, the sulfate, the manganese, zinc, copper, boron, molybdenum, cobalt, nickel, and all of the other elements. But the fish water will provide an organic enhancement Benefit, provide some probiotic life and be a great starter to add the necessary missing elements to. Now there are different ways of doing it. You can do a foliar feed and not contaminate the fish water. Mm -hmm. You can take the fish water, add the nutrients and circulate it through a primary crop and then capture it at the end and then circulate it to a secondary crop so that it's efficient and there's no waste. Mm -hmm. So yes, aquaculture is a great idea, a great method and absolutely completely incomplete plant nutrition. Great. Well, that's all of my questions. Thank you very much for having us today. It was really interesting talking to you. Then my goal is fulfilled and I went from being a young man to an older man <laughs> and I'm very pleased with my work and grateful to everyone who contributed because I didn't do this alone. I'm just the conductor of the band now. <laughs> Marion, I believe you are the first violin. Ooh, <laughs> thank you. That's a big responsibility. <laughs> well, it's a great achievement, actually. Thank you very much for the thank interview. You. Oh, crazy. Oh, I see. It's